I was going to ask you about on the transportation side was there are companies though, like, you know, Cummins and other sort of freight carriers that are investing money into fuel cell technology. I think Boeing is even looking into hydrogen fuel cell technology for their planes. Um, you know, I've heard that from a, from a heavy freight standpoint, at least for heavy trucking anyways, um, you know, the weights matter a lot. And so, you know, I know you said battery battery density is increasing and so on. And you pointed out the Tesla, Tesla semis, but, but my understanding is that for long haul trucking, long haul, not the, not the short mm-hmm. haul, not the, you know, long haul trucking when they're traveling, you know, 12, 1500 miles and time matters and weights matter that there might still be a case for hydrogen fuel cell technology. So I just want to jump into, into those scenarios, I guess. Sure. Um, so no, there isn't. Um, and I, I've, I've had these conversations globally. Um, you know, perhaps one of the best, most in-depth conversations I had with was David Sebon, who's a professor of mechanical engineering at uh, Cambridge. I hope he's at Cambridge now. That's right. I keep getting those two mixed up. It's like, at least I never say he's at Yale or Harvard. But he's also the founder and director of the Center for Sustainable Road Freight. Yeah. This is a guy who spent twenty years, the first 20 years of his career studying heavy road vehicles, um, their impacts on roads and efficiencies for them, and the past 14 years of his life studying decarbonization of road freight. Um, so, mm-hmm. and he runs a conference every year. I, I analyzed the um, agenda of the conference and the proceedings of the conference from last year, I think it was December. And basically, in the sustainable road freight space, everything's electrification and there's a couple of, oh, there's some stuff on hydrogen that continues to make it obvious it's not. Um, so back to battery energy density. Right now, the Tesla Semi did a thousand miles, sixteen hundred kilometers in a single day of fully loaded yep. service. It can do eight hundred kilometers on a single charge, five hundred miles on a single charge. Um, its battery energy density is two hundred and sixty nine watt hours per kilogram. CATL mm-hmm. just announced double that, five hundred kilowatt hours. So that that thousand miles, 1,500 kilometers, 1,600 kilometers, turns into 2,000 miles, 3,200 kilometers, right? Oh, well, gee, that's a single day. Huh, okay, so that starts to look good. And the silicon battery energy densities, which we've already unlocked in three different firms and three different technology stacks, so Mm -hmm. one of them is going to work and be commercially viable. By 2035, 2040, we're going to see five times that, right? And so... What that means is that the longest haul truck today, the diesel truck in the United States today, has enough gas to run about 2,200 miles, about, you know, just over 3,000 kilometers. Mm-hmm. We're almost there. It, the problem is just getting electricity to them, and that's vastly easier than getting hydrogen to them. Electricity is much easier to transmit mm-hmm. and distribute than hydrogen is. Hydrogen yep, is that's true. pretty much the yep. worst subject. Here's, here's one for you. How many tanker trucks of hydrogen that are the same size as a tanker truck of gasoline does it take to fill a gas station with the same energy? I have no idea, but I imagine a lot more. 14. Wow. Yeah. So every gas station is going to get 14 times as many trucks driving to it just to deliver the hydrogen? No. Oh, no, we'll just make the hydrogen from water at the gas station. Oh, so you're going to put three times the electricity to the gas station to make the hydrogen and more to pump and compress and store it than just using electricity directly. Why would you do that? Right? As soon as you start asking these really basic mm-hmm. questions, the entire long haul um, trucking thing, they're, they're out to launch on that. Um, the, and there's an empirical statement I'll make. I said earlier there's 500,000 electric trucks and 600,000 electric buses running on the roads of China. An absurdly, absurdly uh, dynamic uh, economy. These are not sitting around idle. Mm. Like Mm -hmm. buses in China run all the time, right? And so Mm -hmm. 1.1 million of uh, heavy-duty, regular-use vehicles, under 10,000 fuel cell vehicles in the entire country. Hmm. That experiment has already been run. It's already been won in China. Yeah. Uh, and I'll give you the other example. Uh, mining. 
big cats, right? The biggest vehicles in the world that are used in mining stuff. Mm. Alberta knows these things. The cater, I, I, you know, spent some time. The local Caterpillar um, dealership was one client of mine. They sold a lot of trucks mm. uh, and serviced a lot of trucks in the, in the oil sands. Well, a few weeks ago, uh, BHP, one of the biggest mining companies in the world, Rio Tinto, one of the biggest mining companies in the world, and BH mm -hmm. and Fortescue Mining Group, not one of the biggest ones, but still pretty damn big, um, all announced separately and together um, that they weren't going to bother with hydrogen for their mining. It's all going to be electricity. It's all going to be battery electricity. Mm. In Caterpillar, 80% of the alternative vehicles they sell are all electric. Their, their strategy is electric. Hydrogen doesn't have a play anywhere in any of these things. Um, yeah, it's, so, that's so, just the nature so why, 